we are all African. We want to understand all variation in the DNA of humans, wherever the human is situated. We need to study the mother DNA, that is the DNA of African population. Genetic diversity in the African continent is greater than anywhere else in the world. For us to really understand genetics, it is essential that we conduct genomic research in Africa. Genetic medicine for African population is the name of our research centre. We envision to foster our energy on disease that may translate very rapidly the benefit of genetic medicine for population living in Africa, but at the same time, use that knowledge to inform the global community of how this can be useful for the other population out of Africa. We recognize that at UCT we've got fantastic research capacity and infrastructure, and that's not always replicated everywhere else in the continent. But we very actively support research sites so that we can build capacity over the whole continent. GeneMap is engaging communities to really bridge the gap between the research we do and communities understanding. It's very critical that we engage with the communities and share the work that we do so that we get their perspective as well in what we're doing. My name is Kwejovis Pakatukanda. I am a sickle cell patient and I run the sickle cell organization. GenMap is very, very good at listening to whatever we have to say. They are very supportive and we come to them whenever we need help. Sickle cell disease is very common in Africa. More than 80% of the 300,000 babies that are born per year are born in Africa. It was important for us to undertake a study in ancestral population to come up with new genetic modifiers that are specific to African populations. Under SICO Africa Data Coordinating Center, we are working with Pan-African Research Consortium to collect and analyze data. In order to define this resource, we use a collaborative research approach in order to come up with a structured vocabulary that helps share knowledge in sickle cell. In my study, we study the pharmacogenomics of sickle cell therapeutics, looking at those variants that are responsible for drug metabolism, of which we're working with hydroxyl, which is a medication for sickle cell disease. For children that are born with genetic hearing loss in Europe, we know that two genes will explain 50% of those children. Those two genes explain 0% in the African population. So our research really is to investigate what are the novel genes uh, that we will need to use for diagnostic. We do our research with people living with hearing impairment. Their role is really to be out there when we do patient recruitment to engage with them. It's also to give us understanding of what challenges that they are dealing with. Previously, we had hearing staff who've never communicated with the deaf community. By us being involved and being employed, we were being able to share information with the deaf community that they can identify with. And we also know that Obatanda is the only one that is deaf in the family. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to examine her. What we do is to visit the schools for the deaf and identify families that have at least two or more individuals from the same family with the hearing impairment problem. And we invite both parents, other family members that are unaffected. We recruit them, take samples and process. When we do recruitment for hearing loss, we make sure that we give awareness and information to the deaf community. If we're able to spread newborn babies at an early stage, we can give them the appropriate intervention that would help them to perform in school. Some communities are very negative when it comes to deafness. We can remove the negativity by helping them understand what deafness is and sharing the information with them. In GeneMap, we also look at the ethical issues associated with doing genetic research, thinking about how do people understand genetic knowledge, 
how do they make sense of genetics when their conditions are genetic. The more we speak about the biological component of illness, we can use it as a tool to reduce stigma, uh, for instance. Fragile X is a neurodevelopmental condition linked to the X chromosome. It manifests with learning disabilities, um, neurodevelopmental conditions. In Cameroon, we have worked with a family um, that is really affected by Fragile X. In that community, we've worked quite a bit um, helping them understand the nature of this condition. We get people to act out scenarios um, of a family seeking treatment, for instance, and being involved in genetic research. We really engage with what the ethical issues are um, that arise in genomic research. What I really find fascinating is the ability to share our work and to package it in a form that you can understand, I can understand, every human being can understand. It's so important for Africans to have a voice in the field of genetics. We don't need to wait on other people to find solutions to our genetic problems in Africa. We believe that because of the projects that we are now running, the Global Convention now knows that it will be difficult to uh, progress in genetics without the involvement of African DNA and we hope with African scientists too.